Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about the books I'm going to be reading in May and June. So I am a little bit late to upload this video, but this month I do want to carry forward two books from my last TBR that I have not yet finished and also add in some new books of course. And a little spoiler warning, it did help me get out of my reading slump that I had experienced back in April. So let's just get to the books. First, quickly going over the two books that I'm carrying forward from the last TBR is Jade City by Fonda Lee. So this one is an adult urban fantasy book and it's about two crime syndicates who control the island of Kekon. And on this island, there's a rare magical jade that can grant you superhuman ability. We're following the Call family who is considered a Greenbone clan since their previous generations had jade-wearing warriors who protected this island. But now the conflict in this book is the Calls and their rival clan are at odds with each other and that just might bring a lot of upheaval to the island itself. Jade City was one of the books I really wanted to get to in March slash April, but I didn't get the chance to, or really rather, I was just in a really bad reading slump those two months. But anyways, the other book I wanted to get to was The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. This is a self-development book, and it's a little bit ironic because given this title of the book, it's saying like The Power of Now, so even though I didn't read this book, I'm just bringing it forward for this TBR, so... Now moving on to my mug pick of this TBR. So again, I have some contemporary or romance books in here. You can see that there. So I'm just gonna pick one. So I think this is perfect timing for this book and I got Second Chance Summer. So my mug pick of this TBR is Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson. And I'm not going to be reading much of the description of this one because I think reading descriptions of contemporary books for me or contemporary romance books for me is a little bit of a spoiler, I think. Just based off the title itself and like looking at the cover, I'm assuming it's about someone's summer or gr teenage girl's summer and she's getting a second chance at love or a second chance at something that she missed out earlier on in her life. So I am looking forward to it. And I really do enjoy Morgan Madsen's writing of the books that I've read from her. So I'm excited. Okay, and then finally on to my specific book picks of the month that are mainly thrillers and murder mysteries. And I really decided to go into this genre for this TBR because I think I'm just a little bit burnt out with fantasy books even though I have tried to go back into my fantasy roots is which is a little bit difficult for me to get back into the groove of learning of a new fantasy world and all the new characters and all the new cultures and magic systems. Originally I do really love that but I think I just need to switch up a genres completely and I'm really hoping that these books and I get a little bit spoiler, they have helped me to get on my readings. So the first book I'm going to be talking about is The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. This book does release June 21st, but I did get an early copy from Night Guy Ali, so thank you Night Guy. So this is my first really Sager book and I have previously heard a lot about this author and about all his thriller books. And I have wanted to read some of his thriller books, but this is going to be my first one and I'm slowly going to make my way through his backlist. So what this book is about is about a recent widow, Casey, who is also an actress. And to get away from the paparazzi, she decides to go stay at her family lake house in Vermont. But while Casey is reeling from her husband's death, she gets a little bit curious about her neighbors. And at that time of the year that she's at the family lake house, there's not many people around at that time. So when there is a couple that's across the lake from her, Casey takes it upon herself to like maybe entertain herself by watching them through binoculars. <laughs> so this couple across the lake is Tom and Catherine. Tom is a tech millionaire and uh, Catherine is a former supermodel. So one day Casey is just watching the lake and enjoying the view but then she notices someone is drowning and that someone is Catherine. So Casey goes out into the lake and saves Catherine and from there they form a sort of friendship. Casey at this point still continues to watch the couple and to me that's a little bit weird but to each their own <laughs> and to whatever Casey is trying to grasp and recover from. But Casey knows that Tom and Catherine's marriage is a bit rocky but then Catherine disappears and Casey is suspecting that it's Tom but Everything just downspires from there and we get a lot of twists and turns and 
I have to say that I really enjoyed this one. It was really fast paced. I read it in three days, which is fast for me considering of my reading slump. And it did give me window in the woman kind of vibes, but I think that's all I'm gonna say about this, but I did really enjoy this one and I have already read it earlier this month. So next up we have another mystery book. This is a YA mystery and it's Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This is my current read, really. By the time I'm uploading this, I think I'll be finished this book by then. But anyways, this book has been on my TBR for a while and I keep on seeing it on Instagram and I've always wanted to read it and I think this is like the perfect time for me to pick it up and maybe just binge read the entire series. So this is another book set in Vermont and now we're set at Ellingham Academy. Ellingham Academy is one of those schools that attract the bright and brightest across the globe to attend them. The unique thing about this school is that the founder, Albert Ellingham, considers school and learning to be a game. So to this founder of this academy, it's a game to him to learn. But after the school is opened in the early 20th century, the school's founder, Albert, his wife and daughter are kidnapped. The only clue left behind is a mysterious riddle and kind of listing different ways of how to murder someone and it's only signed by Truly Devious. This crime remains unsolved until present day Stevie Bell attends this academy, which is also free for all students, but you just have to be accepted into it. And at the academy, Stevie is really like a Sherlock Holmes type. She's really into crime, true crime, and, and Stevie is really good at picking up on clues that others may not have previously noticed or took note of. And Stevie does want to solve this cold case, which does remind me of the book series A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I really love that one and I hope this one will be more of, along of the lines of that as well. However, Stevie is having a tough time balancing her new schoolwork and her new five housemates and now there's a new murder that has happened in the academy and Truly Devious is back. So we have two different mysteries that need to be solved and I'm quite excited to continue reading on into this book series. So far, what I've read of Truly Devious, this is the first book, I have really enjoyed so far. So the next book is something that has been all over the book-ish world is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And at first, looking at the cover of this book, I originally thought it was another fantasy series, but I never really read into the description or synopsis. And I was just looking at the cover just based on that. I kind of dismissed it and I just thought it was just another fantasy series. And at the time, I was not interested in picking up another fantasy book. But looking into it, it's actually a young adult mystery book, so it's on my list. The tagline of this book is a Cinderella story with deadly stakes and thrilling twists. So that is something that piqued my interest. So let's just get into what this one's about. So we're following Avery, who's simply trying to get through high school and graduate high school and win a scholarship to go to college. But a billionaire, Tobias Hawthorne, leaves Avery his fortune, but Avery doesn't even know who this guy is. <laughs> but of course she's intrigued and she's like, millions of dollars that I could get. So she's interested in that. But in order to get this inheritance, she has to move into the Hawthorne house. So in this house, each room is filled with puzzles and riddles and mysterious clues. And along with living in this house, Avery has four new roommates and they are the four grandsons of Tobias. So of course, the grandsons suspect Avery of either being a con woman or simply Avery herself is another puzzle left for the boys to solve from their grandfather. I'm guessing there's going to be a little bit of romance between a grandson or two of them. This is going to be a little bit interesting for Avery to navigate her way through this situation. I do think the Inheritance Games will be my next book if I don't continue on with the Truly Devious series. So I'm really excited to get to this one as well. And my second adult thriller choice for this TBR is Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. So this is another author I have not yet read from before, although I am curious about how I would like her writing. The basic premise of this book is about six different people who decide to go have a vacation. So this group is comprised of Lux and her boyfriend, two college best friends, and another couple they meet along the way 
and they're all sailing to Moreau Island. But Moreau Island is essentially a paradise, really. But it has a really rocky and mysterious history of shipwrecks, cannibalism, and even murder. But then, a lone stranger appears on the island, and the group dynamics of the six original people is rocky, and it turns a lot more strained when this random stranger appears. One person goes missing and another turns up dead, so the group is realizing this island is a little bit too far from civilization and there might not be anyone to help them if they need it, and they're also not sure if they will even survive this trip. So this premise is interesting to me. I don't think I've read anything like it before about um, people going sailing to an island for a vacation. It does seem like an interesting one, but I hope I'll also manage to read this one throughout May and June. Those were all the books I'm aiming to read in May slash June. Of course, my TBR lists are not always set in stone. As I've realized um, as I'm making my YouTube videos on books and such. But I'm gonna keep it hopeful and hoping I will read all of the books. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below and ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads. I'll see you all soon.